Elon Musk's Twitter takeover explained with Yu-Gi-Oh! Imagine Seto Kaiba, billionaire inventor, influencer, tech mogul, and total prick. He's got a loving brother, all the money in the world made by his war crime loving father, and a jet plane shaped like a dragon. Everything anyone could ever hope and dream for. But he's still not happy, because despite all of his success, he still lacks the one thing that will make him whole. Everyone's undying love and worship. Because while it's true that he's got a lot of fans, the Blue Eyes fanatics, the Yugi Boomers, the Duel Links aficionados, what he's really looking for are the good players. Sure, he calls them all third-rate duelists with fourth-rate decks, meta sheep, but Kaiba doesn't just want them to love him, he wants to be one of them. He wants to be the one winning tournaments, defining the metagame, getting interviewed, having his face immortalized in those creepy Konami, er, industrial illusions portraits. Now, he could get to that point by improving his deck and adapting to how the game has evolved, but that's way too hard. So he does what any desperate billionaire does. He buys his way in. At the next YCS Domino City, Kaiba pays off the tournament organizers and judges to let him advance to the finals without playing a single match. It costs so much money that he has to sell most of his Kaiba Corp shares to do it, but he's in the top 16, ready to dominate with his expertly crafted Blue Eyes deck, and he loses the first match, and everyone is laughing at him because literally everyone knows he paid his way in. Kaiba is spiraling. He made it to the top tables. Where is the respect he deserves? Why are the good players still laughing at him? Instead of looking inward, Kaiba looks at his deck. During his match, he drew an awful hand. Not a single copy of Blue Eyes, just bad extenders. He's not the problem, the extenders are. So he grabs his deck and takes out all the extenders, all the consistency cards all the staples, and who replaces them with blue eyes. Just all blue eyes. And since he spent so much money buying his way into the YCS, all the cards are like PSA 2 water damaged bulk, being sold on TCG Player for 5 cents. And he's spending so much time focused on building this horrible new deck that all of Kaiba Core's shareholders and advertisers are packing up and running for their lives. But the Duel Monsters World Championships are coming up fast, and Kaiba needs money to buy his way in. So he puts up a message on the Kaiba Core website assuring his rabid Blue Eyes fanatics that everything is fine, this is all part of the plan, really, but he needs everyone reading this to send him $8 right now. In exchange, they'll get an exclusive digital collectible of Obelisk the Tormentor, minted on the blockchain to certify its authenticity and the knowledge that they've helped fight back against the elitist meta sheep. He manages to sell just enough Obelisk coin to buy his way into the World Championships. He arrives early on Saturday, ready to dominate these meta sheep that he hates and envies so much, ready to become the true king of games. And he loses round one, and round two, and round three. He wins round four because his opponent gets disqualified for smoking weed between rounds, and he loses round five. So now Kaiba has no money, no good cards, and no respect. And since Kaiba Core is the leading manufacturer of dual discs and other dueling equipment, the entire game of dual monsters is now at risk of ending. Across the world, people's dual discs are malfunctioning. People are making decks with 35 copies of Pot of Greed because no one will stop them. And like a third of the player base is so fed up with Kaiba's nonsense that they quit dual monsters and start playing fucking dungeon dice monsters. So what's the moral of the story here? Well, it's pretty simple. 